Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar series. Um, my name is Kunal, and I am the integration consultant at Airtel. Um, today's session is about using panels APIs. So what we're going to be covering off today is um, how you can configure your app to show um, panels within a job summary page in Snapfire. Um, I'll go through a couple of examples of what um, some of the apps are doing in terms of what you can see in the panels. Um, and I'll also show you just some of the basic API calls you can make to get um, job information out of panels. So panels are what we normally use for doing things like um, you know, job board postings uh, traditionally. Um, and you, this is a good interface for you to have some of your apps showing um, your product to the customer um, without them having to leave the SnapFire platform, or if they do need to leave the SnapFire platform, uh, they can kind of just click through from your panel. Um, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll get started right into it, and um, I'll run through a quick demo of setting everything up. So what we'll start with is um, I'll show you what a panel looks like in SnapFire, just so that you can have a rough idea of what we're talking about. So. In this instance, we're just talking about SnapFire because that's what I've got set up, but this can ideally be used with any ATS that um, uh, looks for the panels API. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Cool, so now you should be able to see my screen. Um, I'm gonna quickly switch over to my SnapFire window here. So I've actually logged into a SnapFire window earlier. Um, just sort of run you through what I've got currently open. So I've got um, SnapFire open on one window. This is just the UAT site. I've got um, my Talent App Store on another one, on another tab, and I've got developer.talentappstore.com. So I'll be sort of walking through the whole process. Um, what I've also got running in the background is I've got an IntelliJ project that I've sort of built for this demo that's running in the background that's going to be showing us a panel and what happens when somebody clicks on any of the buttons in the panel. Apart from that, I have a local ngrok that will be also um, showing the API calls as we look through it. Um, you can kind of already see here that I'm getting all these API calls coming in to my app. And the final one is just MySQL. This is just to show the install basically of my app. So if we get started with this, we will go into the jobs tab, give you a brief look into what SnapRail looks like. So I'm just gonna click on any of these jobs here. So let's just click on this one. Just gonna open that job. So what you can see here are different examples of how so different apps use um, the panels to display different information. So for example, you've got um, this switch gear app, or something we call switch gear. It allows you to um, decide, it allows users to decide which buttons should be available for candidates that are applying to jobs on your site. So you can actually click on the edit button here and simply drag and drop. So you know you don't have to go off to the actual app itself. You can do it all on here. Um, otherwise, if you did want to, you could log into the Talent App Store um, to can and go to the app and do it from there too. So this is more of a job by job basis that you could do this. Again, there's another app here that's um, called Ernest. What it does is it reviews your um, job description and it tells you how readable it is or how difficult it is to read. So um, what this one actually does is it gives you a score and it gives you an option to edit the description in Ernest itself. So if I change this description, Hit refresh score, you can see it does that automatically. And if I do save the job, now I've done that. So just going to close this actually. And if I go to my job and hit refresh, that score should now be updated on here too. So you can see the score has been updated in here. Um, if we wanted to actually look at what the description is, we can click on edit jobs. And if you go to our description panel, 
you can see that it now has the updated description. So that's just one of the ways your panel can interact with um, the ATS. Um, uh, there's a couple of API calls it does in the background um, that allow it to post the job information back into SnapR to update the job. Um, and saying that, you know, some of the APIs that we're going to talk about and look at um, tell you exactly what the job is, what the information about the job is. So that allows you to grab all of that job information. Um, here's another example. So this one, you can't do anything unless you click edit. That takes you off to a different screen. Um, and in this screen, you can edit the assessments that show up on your job. And the final one is just posting to a job board. Um, so yeah, how do we actually get these panels showing up in this job summary page? Um, well, you've first got to go create a developer account. So go into developer.telenapstore.com, um, log in or sign up if that's your first time. Remember, please remember when you do sign up, um, we do recommend use the Google or Microsoft option or if you've got Slack, any one of those is fine. Just do not use the email IDP. Um, because that email IDP is linked to the Snapfire site. So that can cause issues when working with the developer doc. So I've already signed in. So I'm actually going to go log into my, as you can see, I've got a bunch of developers. I'm just going to log in to my particular developer account. If you do want to know more information about, um, you know, creating a developer account and going through the process or creating a tenant, um, we've all done a webinar series before that describes how to um, work through that process. So, you know, we'll link that after the after this webinar, we'll have it on our forum. You can just search for it on the forum. Um, so I'm just going to quickly. So what what we're going to do is we're going to install a private app. So a private app is something that is invisible in the Talent App Store marketplace. It just means that um, you know it hasn't gone through the whole Snapire Talent App Store um, QA process. So because it's a private app the only way to get it installed is through an install token. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this token, go into tenantapstore.com and sign in to my tenant. So I will use this tenant here. Again, you can also log in and create a tenant yourself so that you can do some of this testing. We have sandbox um, environments that you can sort of use. So we have something known as developer ATS that a lot of our partners have used in the past to build their apps. Um, basically what developer AT is, is it's just a simplified version of Snapfire that can be um, accessed by anyone. So you all have your own instance of developer ATS when you install it. So no, there's no cross reference of any data or anyone else seeing your stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on install from token. Just paste. And you can see it now shows up. So if I hit install again, actually before I do that, I might as well discuss some of the APIs that I call. So to actually make the correct API calls for panels to show up, there's sort of two APIs that really count. Um, firstly, what you need to do is you need to have this panels to users slash me slash jobs. That's the job ID that you put in there uh, that gets provided to you by SnapHire um, by app. Uh, and the other one you want you want to be calling is this one jobs by ID slash ID job and in the job section you would just put in the ID. Um, what that does is it allows you to get the job information um, for a particular job based on the ID you've been provided by Snapfire. Um, so the way it works is once I've installed this app. So the way it works is the ATS will, um, whenever somebody goes to a job page on the ATS, the ATS will um, ask Talent App Store or, you know, if there are any apps that produ produce a panel that it needs to display on that job. Um, and basically what your app's doing is it's getting that call from um, Talent App Store saying, uh, do you produce a panels API uh, for, this for this particular job? And that's when your app will respond and say, uh, yep, I do produce a panels API and, um, that's when you can display a panel. So I'll show you what the API call sh should have. So if I go into developer docs. So this is our developer documentation. Again, all of this stuff can be found straight from our website. Um, if we click onto tenant APIs. And if you scroll down, you can see panels. 
So the one we're looking at is this one. So this is the one that shows up to users, not, and then we've also got a separate one for candidates, but in this instance, we're just looking at panels that show up for users. Um, so if you click on that, you can see that it, So basically what you're doing in this panel is, this panel is just an iframe. So you're just responding and saying what URI you want to show. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could show, send them back to you, show just a page from your platform. And that would be what's reflected in the iframe slash panel. Um, so that's basically what a panel is. So when, whenever somebody, whenever somebody has your app installed, when they go to a particular job page, so it's just a job summary page, um, the ATS then pings your app asking you if you produce a panel. Um, so let me see if I've got my app installed. Cool. So you can see my apps installed and it says setup required. So again, you know, there's a whole, um, install journey that you can take your customers through. Um, in this case, I'm just going to click on setup required. So this is just a simple test app. So it doesn't actually do much. And just gonna give me a second. Right. So if you just hold on for a second, I'm just going to quickly pause this. All right. So it looks like there's some kind of bug with my app at the moment, but what I've done is um, I've actually installed it on another tenant so that we can actually just progress with the um, webinar. And what you can see is there's a set of required going to click on that, get out of that one. Here we are, click on that. So my app requires you to do some sort of setup stage. Um, normally at this point, what you would want to be doing is having some kind of um, install form or registration form. So what would happen is the customer would install your app. Um, they would then say if they're an existing customer or a new customer and based on that, um, you would provide them a login screen or a sign up screen, and this would help the customer with um, sort of getting onboarded with your platform and you know you help your sales team also know who to reach out to. Um, what because what Town App Store sends is it just tells you um, the basic information so you can see that you know I've got this um, app status being sent. Um, again, you know there's this post tenants that's what tells you um, who's installed the app. It tells you the basic information. So we've kind of covered that off in another webinar that you can see. Um, so if I just go back to this, so you can see my app's been installed and set up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use developer ATS. So this is what we were talking about earlier, just so that we can give you a bit of a preview of what developer ATS looks like and how it can work. You can see my demo install app is installed. Um, there is a developer ATS here. So if I click on develop ATS, click to open it. Um, when you open it, you get asked to sign in. So I'm just gonna click sign in. And you can see I've got a couple of jobs on here anyways. So I'm just gonna try and keep this going. So I'm gonna click on this test job. And I wanna try and see. So you can see that um, my app's getting this, um, you know, is being asked for um, a panel and for the job number of 15737, that's the ID, job ID. Um, you can see here, you know, this is it being asked for the users. Um, this is it showing up here. Um, so what you can see now is this is my panel, basically. This is what I've decided to show for anyone that wants to see it. Um, so if somebody wants to interact with it, they would click view job info. And basically you get some basic job information about this. So um, that's basically how a panel works. Um, you know, once you've got those APIs defined, um, then the flow just starts working from there. Um, so the key parts to this is just using the job IDs that you get sent through. So you can see, you know, this was the job ID for my um, job. You can even see that there's a, I've called this a snap by reference code, but there's also a reference code that shows up. The reference code is what is used by the ATS as some might call it code, some might call it reference. Um, that's kind of how it works. And that's kind of about all my app 
does at this stage. But what you could do is you could have somebody click on this um, view job info. Instead of saying view, it could be post job information. Um, they would click on this button and you would then use that as a trigger to say, um, you know, to make that jobs a by ID slash job API call. And from that, you would get all this job information. And then you could actually respond, send a response back and say, you want to update this panel to now display, um, say, a page from your website that would be relevant at this point. So for example, um, if you do something like um, wanting to just update the um, user to let them know that their job's been posted to your platform, or if you wanted to display some kind of image that represents um, maybe a map or some kind of diagram or a table, it's up to you basically. But the whole idea is you would make those a few API calls and a panel will show up in the ATS. Um, one of the things I did want to cover off in today's webinar was um, what happens if, because these panels are iframes, what happens if somebody, um, if some companies don't allow iframes? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my snap on side to sort of simulate that whole situation. So I'm just going to close these down. If you do have any questions on any of this stuff, do feel free to send us an email or post on the forum. Um, posting on the forum does mean that any any other developer or any of our team can also view those posts. Um, so it's kind of like a knowledge base. It's a good, good place to share information because um, you never know. Some questions you have might be the same things that someone else is thinking too. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go to my settings. So the, in Snapper, at least, there's an option to show um, apps as buttons. So that means this is anyone that um, chooses to ha um, not allow iframes on their browsers. Um, what would happen is instead of the panel being displayed, uh, there will be instead a button that they can click on and get taken through to another tab to see um, the information you provide. So let's go back to our jobs and find that job we were looking at earlier and see what it looks like now when there's only buttons available. So go back to this test manager job. So you can now see there's actually um, one, two, three, four, five buttons showing up. Just gonna click on this earnest one. Um, and you can see this is basically what they would have seen uh, when the panel was visible. So if I close that. Um, so yeah, so basically, you know, if some companies do decide to disable iframes, we do have sort of workarounds that they can do so to get the most out of your app. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's basically the um, full experience of what panels are like and how panels work. Um, hopefully that's covered off any questions any of you might have. Um, so what we'll do is once this webinar is over, we will actually um, just got to go through it and post this online onto our forum. So you just like with the other ones. Um, well, I've got you guys here. I might as well show you where this sit. So if I just go to developer. So you can get to these webinars quite easily just by going to our forum. Um, you can see that there are a couple of webinars that we've done. So there's this getting started on Taz, um, how to handle installs, and we're now going to be posting this um, panels API. Um, you can see there's other people that have asked questions, so feel free to have a nose around and see if there's anything in there that, um, you know, is something you're wondering about as well. Um, but that is basically what we wanted to cover off in today's webinar. So thanks for joining and hope you guys all have a good time. Cheers. Bye.